Okay, good morning. It is Monday, 7.30 a.m. And that means it's time for Monday Morning Mojo. And uh, I recognize mornings aren't for everyone. So I thank you for being here. I have Jill on with me here on Zoom. And I know many of you watching on Facebook. So it's a beautiful day. I'm actually up here in Jefferson, New York in the Catskill uh, region of New York with my friend Rosemary. And we are working on another coaching certification <clears throat> through the John Maxwell team. And we're super excited about that. So there'll be more to come about the resources that I can bring you through that certification soon. Um, so I'm going to get right into this and we're going to jump right in. So I am going to share my screen with all of you because I have some great things that I want to take a look at with you. And we're going to talk about this concept of being um, an early riser and being someone who really uh, embraces the day and starts that day um, maybe with a ritual. So that's what we're going to talk about. And I realize I might be preaching to the choir because a lot of you are up with me now. So Jill, since you're with me live, can you see my screen? I always like to be sure. Yes, I can. Great. All right. So I know mornings are not for everyone. Uh, some people do say they're at their best though, first thing in the morning and they're more creative and effective. Well, I know many of you might be more night owls and feel like you have uh, your energy flowing later at night. <clears throat> I guess the question is, can someone's uh, morning routine have a direct correlation on how the rest of their day goes? I want to say yes, I believe that yes, it's true. So when I came up with this concept for Monday Morning Mojo, um, and I was really intentional about creating this space early in the morning. And it was an opportunity for all of us to make a commitment that even if it was just one day a week, we would get up early and we would have an opportunity to start our day and our week off in a really positive way. And I will say I chose the hour 730 um, really because it was the only time I could fit it in because I really, I start my day around eight o'clock. So this um, for me was an opportunity to get together with all of you. And I know I've had some people say to me, uh, I really wish I could get on there, but it's so early. So this is an opportunity for us to examine your morning routine and for me to put a challenge out to you about getting up an hour early. And, I, and I'm sure you would agree, it's no secret that the most successful people um, if you did some research about them and their habits and their behaviors, you would find that most successful people, the, the entrepreneurs that you read about, are starting their day early. They tend to get up before dawn and they tend to have a routine that really helps them get into the mojo, into the flow and work more efficiently throughout the day. So that is what we're going to talk about this morning. So again, um, thanks for joining me on this Monday Morning Mojo. A reminder, if you're finding a lot of value in this, please share this with your friends. I would love to see this group continue to grow. And what I love seeing is how you share all the things that you're working on and how you are getting value from this. And I know that we have the opportunity to encourage each other. So please share this page. If you're getting a lot of value out of it, someone else will too. So. You know the saying, the early bird catches the worm. It's a, a little saying that has always been attributed to success or success mindset. So honestly, countless studies and numerous prominent examples that we could find in, like I said, people, the executives bios and the you know, most successful entrepreneurs, it does indicate that early risers are more successful in their professional career. Employees tend to be more disciplined, more creative, more energetic. They can achieve at a higher level of productivity. And I mean, at the end of, of it all, if you have to consider the fact that we all have 24 hours in a day, and if you give yourself that extra hour, you know, what can you do with that hour? And that's what we're gonna talk about this morning. So my, my message to those of you who fight the early mornings, uh, it, there may be something in it for you to get up a little bit early. So what we're going to talk about today comes from The Miracle Morning. It's a book written by Hal Elrod. Some of you might be familiar with it. And if you're not, I'll encourage you to pick it up because um, it's an easy read. It's a relatively small book. And in this book, Hal talks about the not so obvious secret to guarantee uh, a transformation in your life 
and something that can happen every day before 8 a.m. that can really catapult you into a more productive day. Um, just a little fact about how he wrote this book. He, um, he was actually in a terrible accident and almost died. And he wrote this book after that when he had a new perspective on life. And, and you know, like a lot of these stories, these stories of overcoming obstacles and um, challenge, we find that that's another common thread with a lot of successful people. You know, the most accomplished entrepreneur, the most successful athlete, many of them have not arrived to their destination um, on, the, on the wings of their guardian angel. It was, it was with a lot of hard work and many times from a really challenging childhood or, or overcoming a lot of adversity. And um, Hal is no different. And he had um, filed bankruptcy. He was in debt. He had this, um, you know, terrible accident. And so this gave him an entirely new perspective on life. And that's when he wrote The Miracle Morning. So in the book, the author shares six steps to implement in the first hour of each morning. And I'm going to go through each one of them with you now and give you an opportunity to consider adding this to your routine. Here's how. Uh, does uh, have a great career now uh, speaking as well. So if you wanna check him out, there's a lot of information about the author. But here are the six morning habits that Hal talks about in the book. And I'm gonna show you some ways that you can implement this into your morning routine. And, um, and, and you know, keep in mind, if you're gonna truly benefit from this miracle morning routine, um, the, this is about getting up early. <laughs> I have to put that out there. You know, any of these activities are powerful in their own right. However, this is about giving yourself that extra hour every day to add to your productivity and to give you really the energy you need to have a productive day. So it's not called the miracle afternoon routine. <laughs> this is the miracle morning routine. And what Hal talks about in the book is, is stacking these habits. Excuse me. So these six habits, uh, when they're stacked on each other, really create a powerful impact in your in your life. And so again, e any of these individually uh, would bring value. However, it's it's when you do them together and stack them that extraordinary things can happen. And so this is where you'll see your motivation increase. Certainly your creativity and your thinking will stretch. Um, and what all of this will do is build momentum for you. And that is, that is the fuel that we're looking for to achieve big things, right? So what are we looking at here? These are the six morning habits. It's silence, visualization, affirmations, exercise, reading, and scribing or writing. So we're gonna go through each one. And uh, if any of you have practiced the Miracle Morning and still do, let me know. I'd love to hear from you in the chat. I know a lot of you are watching this on Facebook, so you can put your comments there. Um, Hal refers to those habits as life savers. And uh, that is the acronym, right, for silence and, and all of the um, six that I just went through with you, affirmations, visualization. So those, that is the acronym savers. So if you think about this, um, when I talk about building habits, think of it as a step, right? So you take step one, then you take step two. And Hal suggests practicing all of these habits within the first hour. So that is a challenge in itself, right? So it's about spending 10 minutes on each of these activities. And when I first read The Miracle Morning and heard about the concept, I'll tell you personally, I wasn't sure that it would be effective if I only spent 10 minutes on each of those activities. Yet what I've come to realize is when you spend 10 intentional, purposeful minutes on each activity, it does create a really profound effect. So anything between you know, six minutes and 60 minutes, I guess is fair game if you wanna spend a minute on each or 10, um, because what we're starting with is the, the ability to build the habits. And then if you feel you need to increase the time, you can. Um, I'll also tell you, you can play around with this a little bit. We're gonna go through in, in order, uh, just based on the acronym SAVERS. But there's really, you can create any order you want to this. The key is doing all six habits 
together within that first hour. And I think I brought this to you this morning in full transparency to recommit to it myself, because I do most of these in the first hour of the day, but not all of them. And so um, that most things I try to teach others is something I need to be reminded of for myself. Isn't that always the case? So let's look at the first step. Step one is silence. So if you could start your day with silence, that just means maybe taking a few deep breaths. It could be meditating. It could be repeating a mantra to yourself. For me, it's prayer. Um, it's really just about knowing that you open your mind and start the day with some serenity and calm. For a lot of us on any given day, those first few minutes might be the only calm we have. So it's, it's definitely a powerful way to begin. And I'll give you a couple of ideas on how you can implement this habit into your routine. Um, it could be opening your eyes and stretching and doing that meditation right there in bed. It could be sitting up at the edge of your bed um, and expressing gratitude, giving thanks. It could be, as I said, a prayer. Uh, it could be some kind of meditation. I've shared on Mojo some um, apps that you can get into like Calm and Headspace. So perhaps you want to start a routine with a, you know, a couple of minutes meditating on one of those apps or using one of their meditations. It could be... Um, I, I talked about breath, but maybe you want to try different forms of, of breathing exercises because there's many. Uh, and it's really also, I think for me, it's getting in touch with my body. So when you first wake up in the morning and you're coming into that state of consciousness, don't forget to reconnect with your body and do a body scan. So just starting from the top of your head, just checking out how you're feeling. Is there any tension in your body? And as I go through and scan my body, if I find that there's a little tension, I just kind of focus on that area and visualize that my breathing is opening it up, right? So if I wake up in the morning and I feel my neck is tight, then I'm going to just really close my eyes, focus on the neck, breathing in and just allowing some light and some energy into that area of my body. And you find that you'll, you will release tension. So connecting breath to how your body, to your body and connecting breath and how your body uh, is reacting to that breath is really important. And I think that's a great way to start your day too. So step one is silence. Step two is affirmations. Now we've talked about this on Mojo before. And so after you've spent some time in silence, you can move into affirmations. And that's just knowing um, that you're going to talk to yourself in a very positive way. And so whether you've written some affirmations, because I know we've given that as exercises to do here through Monday Morning Mojo, uh, you may have them on an index card, you may want to read them to yourself. Uh, but really, at the end of the day, this is just speaking positively to yourself and being your own inner coach, being your own encourager. So just having something that um, is, is really prepping you for the day and telling yourself what a great day you're going to have. Um, and one of my mantras or affirmations in the morning is, is God, use me for your good. Show me who needs my help. Put me in front of the right people and give me the right words to say, because I know today is going to be a great day. So whatever the affirmation is for you, I, I think that giving yourself that pep talk in the morning is a great way to get your mojo going. So let's talk about step three. And uh, step three is the visualization. So in, in this step, uh, or this habit, remember we're building habits, in this habit of the miracle morning, you're just going to take a moment to see yourself in your mind's eye. And one of the things that Hal recommends in the book is going through your day, not in the frenetic way that we sometimes go through our to-do list, but to visualize yourself moving through your day with ease, moving through your day with successful outcomes, moving through your day creating value, moving through your day with this uh, optimistic approach to the great things that are gonna happen. So visually, visualization is simply creating a picture, <clears throat> excuse me, or a movie in your mind. And it should always be in a positive, uh, uh, it should be positive and should be about you achieving something great. So it should be uh, probably really connected and oriented around your goals. So if you're on a path right now to lose weight, visualizing yourself at your goal weight. If you're looking for a new job, visualizing yourself in that career. If you are uh, 
working on a new project at work, visualizing the impact it's going to have. If you're someone who coaches and leads other people, visualize uh, the interactions you're going to have and how you're going to add value to their day to day. So creating that mind movie and collecting those images that represent the goals you want to achieve, uh, playing that video back in your head can have incredible effects on your mind, on, on your energy, on your ability to follow through and actually produce the result. So that is step three. Step four, or the fourth habit, is exercise. Now, for those of you who love to exercise, this is no problem. However, there are a lot of us who maybe we don't have this in our routine. Now, remember, 10 minutes is what you're looking to spend on each of these habits. So we can all move our bodies for 10 minutes. And I am not saying that 10 minutes a day is enough exercise for us. However, this is just part of the miracle morning. So, so that is um, an important distinction. You can put your workout on your day any other time that you want and certainly give yourself that 30 or, or 60 minute workout. What we're talking about is to make sure that in that first hour of every day, you move your body. So whether it's stretching, whether it's dancing around your bedroom or your living room, uh, whatever it is, it, it's about waking up your body. And so a lot of us spend time preparing our minds for the day and we don't spend as much time preparing our body. So I think this is really an important part of the routine because your mind and your body have to work together to accomplish your goals. So let's wake up the body, let's stretch, let's just move around, dance around. Maybe uh, you, know, you have some kind of a yoga routine you like. Maybe it's just going outside and walking up and down your driveway, but get out there and move your body for 10 minutes. That's the fourth habit. Step five, the fifth habit, is reading. And again, just 10 minutes, 10 minutes. You're, you, and again, you can put these activities in any order you want. The key is just doing them all together. And so we know that input determines output. So what you're reading and learning is going to help you with your production and the quality of that production. And by adding the habit of reading to your morning, you'll, you'll be able to start your day by filling your mind with something new, with maybe new facts, new evidence, uh, inspiration, creative ideas. That knowledge is going to show up in your day and probably show up going forward for days to come. So it is a great way for us to be purposeful, perhaps about getting through our reading list, and uh, I don't, you know, I could probably read a chapter in 10 minutes, depending on the book. So it's a great way to, to uh, you know, get through the reading list that we all have on our nightstand and the things we intend to do. So be purposeful about what you choose to read in the morning. Is it going to be something that is inspirational? Is it going to be something that is going to get your mind thinking? Is it going to be something funny? Is it going to be something... Uh, that is, is just bringing joy into your world. So spending 10 minutes reading, fill your bucket, fill your knowledge, gain information, stretch your thinking, be creative. It's all gonna show up for you uh, throughout your day. All right, my friends, the last step, scribing. So this is, this is the habit of journaling. This is one of the uh, habits that I'm not doing well in. So I'll just tell you, this is where I'm gonna recommit to this miracle morning routine. So the habit of journaling is, is going to allow you to just clarify your thoughts. Just get some ideas down on paper. Um, it doesn't have to be in the format of Dear Diary. It just could be putting down in your journal the things that are, are coming to mind. And I personally would keep this as the last step because there probably will be some things that will come to mind based on all of the activities of your first hour here that you may want to put down. It could be a sense of gratitude. It could be some questions that arise. Uh, it could be um, preparing yourself and asking, what am I looking forward to today? That's being intentional rather than just letting the day unfold around you, asking yourself, well, how will I choreograph the day? How will I master these next 24 hours? So 
getting, getting into the habit of having that journal by you and writing in that journal for 10 minutes, um, you'd probably be amazed at what you find on that, on those pages after a few days. So again, it could be what you're grateful for. It could be what you're thinking about. It could be the questions on your mind. Um, it could be a mind map for the day. We'll talk about mind maps and on a mojo in the future. That's a good topic. Um, so whatever comes to mind, it's just putting it down on paper for the next, or in my case, I'd like to do that in the last 10 minutes. So that is the miracle morning. It is these six steps. And I'm going to just go back a couple slides so you can see them again. It's um, just creating this powerful first 60 minutes of your day. It could be starting in silence and ending in writing. That's my, that would be my routine. I would start in silence and end with my scribing. And then you can follow through the way that uh, Hal has it stacked here, visualization, then affirmations and exercises and reading, or you can mix up those four any way you want. Um, so those are the, the six habits. So I do have Jill with me here on Zoom. Um, and if you have anything you want to say uh, about this, Jill, feel free. I don't know if you have anything in the chat. Um, but those of you who are oh, on I Facebook, do. Okay, so we'll give a question or a comment. I was going to type it, but it's just you, me, and maybe who else is listening from the sure, Facebook yeah. world. Um, so much of what you bring, and I really appreciate the positive spin that comes every Monday with your presentation. Um, and with many people, and I'm assuming we're all in, in some way, you know, finding our way through this crazy time, when you see or hear sort of a negative portion of your headset coming at you, what do you... Um, is there any sort of rule of thumb and how to, uh, you know, do you exercise more? Do you <laughs> spend more time exercising or do you have any pointers uh, in that? So I think, I think what I heard you say is, is that when you have a negative thought, what is the best way to overcome that or combat that? Yeah, that's about it. Succinctly okay. put, thank you. <laughs> well, so I think we've talked about this in some other mojos too, that it's important that you acknowledge the thought. There's a process. I, I don't think you can always exercise it away, right? Like you use the example of exercise. Right. I mean, that may give you some temporary release because of the endorphins that, you know, re are released and serotonin. But at the end of the day, you have to come back to that belief. And so you have the awareness that it is negative or holding you back. That's step one, but then step two is to examine where it comes from so that you can really replace it. So once you're aware of the negative thought or limiting belief, then you wanna understand like, where is it coming from? How do I rewrite it or, or rework that thought so that it's much more empowering and lifting and encouraging and allowing me to be limitless rather than hold me back? And, and then there's a process because it's not just snap your fingers and say, okay, I have this new thought, it's great, it's gonna work. Um, you, you probably would wanna practice affirmations. Uh, you would probably wanna examine, you know, what are you reading? What are you listening to? Who are you spending time with? Are those things providing um, programming that is negative too? And, and really like take, an, take a look at your environment as well. So there's a few steps to that. It's not just pushing an easy button. Um, I think that, that what we talked about here this morning is only going to help you. And I think the more times we engage in, in positive, joyful, uh, creative activities that it is going to condition us, right? Because that's what I mean by programming us to start to wire our thinking along the lines of being much more positive, much more open to abundance, much more creative energetically. And so this is all part of it. It's just that I, I want to make it clear that it is a commitment to probably changing a lot of the way that you see your day and how you spend your time and, and how you're thinking, especially. When we change the way we think, we certainly change our world, for sure. So it's a great question. And uh, I think, again, that this is part of it. So here's the thing. We've talked about this before, too. Our, our beliefs are the rules we live by, and that's what shapes our thoughts. Our thoughts really you know, become the things that we say and do, and those actions bring results. So when we're looking for different results in our life, if we're just changing the things that we're doing without really examining the belief, 
then the things that we're doing will not be sustainable. So even this habit, this, this routine, the miracle morning, if you don't examine uh, the belief systems around each of these activities and the belief system around what you think it's going to do for your world, then just by putting some time into this, it might not last, right? That's why we find we, we're on a diet for six weeks and then we give up or we have this great morning routine and then we give up. So we have to examine what keeps us anchored in, in um, the activity is really the belief system we have. Good. Thank you. Is that helpful? Yep. yep. Awesome. Well, I appreciate you being here on Zoom. And I, of course, appreciate all of you who are watching on Facebook. I would love to encourage some of you to come back to Zoom. It's always great to have conversations like this and uh, have the ability to interact with each other. However you get this information, though, is the, the important part is you get the information. So that is really why I do this. Um, so again, by adopting these six habits um, of the Miracle Morning, you can certainly set yourself up for mental, physical, emotional, spiritual success or dialing into well-being and give you an opportunity to start your day in a really powerful way. So I would love to know if you plan to adopt this into your routine and how you plan to adopt it. I, um, my, my purpose for doing this Monday Morning Mojo is to inspire you to live your best life. So if this spoke to you this morning and, and it's something that you're going to incorporate, please let us know on the Facebook group. And uh, this way we can all encourage each other and uh, work through this together. So Jill, thanks for joining me here this morning on Zoom. Thank you, all of you who are watching this on Facebook. I love you and I wish you a really great day. Thank you, Anna. All right, take care. Take care now. Bye-bye. Bye. There we go.